things had changed. Last year, I went from the waning days of living in my uncle's basement to living on my boss's couch. And then soon after, I had no car. At each step along the way, it seemed like things might get better, only for that not to be the case. What followed was an eight month trek through the darkest of my days. I descended into a darkness so thick that I quite honestly never thought I would escape. I thought that my marriage blowing up back in 2014 was rock bottom for me. But as it turns out, I wasn't quite finished falling just yet. When it seemed all hope was lost, when I thought I had reached a point of no return, that I was going to have to go leave Connecticut and my daughter behind to leave for Seattle, something remarkable happened. It all got better, and I got a lifeline. The lifeline came courtesy of my dad, who I enjoyed an iffy relationship with. It was something I had wanted to improve upon, and I wanted to do so after I had fixed my mess. The last thing in the world I had wanted to do was to call him for help. But in a strange sort of way, I think this actually helped that along a little. He helped me get my car, and then within weeks, I had resolved my living situation. Oh yes, things were very different now. The old Duncan was gone, replaced by a new one with a drive through Oh, it's so lit, yo. How do you like drive through Uh, it's fine. It's one of my favorite questions. My boss had been transferred out, and new management was in place. I had said that this new Duncan would never be my home. But it gradually became so. But that isn't something that I can allow for myself. I cannot grow comfortable here and stay. It is my time to go. Crystal was out of the picture. I had learned that she had actually quit Subway, which means the likelihood of me running into her was nil. This time she was definitely gone. Maybe. I should point out that 2018 wasn't a total loss. My two longtime friends came together, gradually built up a relationship and a closeness, and bought a house together. Bad times led to me actually spending much, much more time with my friends than I had ever really had before. It was the formation of Team Sad. At the tail end, I was trying to be less of a hermit and get myself out a little bit more than I had for most of the year. Long time. Still hanging around, huh? Daddy, can I go home? <laughs> Dave can't go home. No. No. So what do you think? Of, what do you think of the new Duncan? Um, I'm eating egg and cheese wrap. Get my egg and cheese wrap. What do you think of the new Duncan? <laughs> what, do you like it? Uh, no. I mean, yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, with luck, I won't be here much longer. The question going into this year was a little bit different than last year. This time, the question was less about getting back on my feet, and more about where can I go from here. It has been several months since I had escaped my bad circumstances, but deep down there was a fear, a fear that I wasn't quite out of the woods yet, that I would soon find myself back in the nightmare situation, in a bad living situation, and without a car. For the first time in a long time, there was no deadline. There was no deadline to leave my uncle's basement or my boss's couch. I was in a stable situation. I was stable for the first time since my marriage blew up. But I didn't quite trust that stability. I didn't quite trust myself. I had proven that I could dig myself into holes and then dig myself out when my back was against the wall. But could I avoid falling into those holes in the first place? Could I push forward and reach new heights? Last year, when things were at their bleakest, I met with my Uncle Gary. And he got it into my head that I can think about matters of more than just mere survival. That I can think about my future and what I actually want to do and I realized exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to make Corman Productions, the little hobby of mine, into my business. I wanted to do wedding videos, but not just any wedding videos. Wedding videos with a Dave Corman twist. But at the time of the conversation, and immediately after, it was difficult to imagine how to get there from the bottomless pit that I was in. I am no longer in that bottomless pit, but even still, I'm not quite sure how to get where I want to go from here. Early on in the year, I was doing things like trying to get my dating life back on track using plenty of fish. This is pointless. Since I gave up on Crystal, I hadn't really tried, and truthfully, I kind of realized I wasn't really ready. And I was trying to stay social. And I made an effort towards building a relationship with my dad, and trying to get him to spend time with his granddaughter. But then my depression started getting the better of me and I started retreating from all of it.
Wintertime is generally speaking when my depression is at its worst. Darkness comes sooner. And it's cold. I hate the cold. Compared to how low I felt at times last year. My depression now was barely mild, but still, it was enough to make me be more reclusive and to retreat away from people, as well as to keep me from pursuing my goals. Depression or not, I still had a kid to entertain. One weekend, me and Julia went to the Lutz Children's Museum, where Kate actually works. We didn't run into her. He does sometimes. He knows how to whistle, and he knows how to laugh. There is a frog in here. Yep, yeah, it's the turtle. really don't move very much. That's a crow. It's uh, what do you see? What do you see, Nemo? Me! Oh yeah! It's a clownfish. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Red ear slider. Nope. There's a sign saying, please don't touch. But looking is okay. Who am I now? Who could I become? I know who I once was, 
and I know who I was at my worst last year. At the absolute worst times, I was a pretty miserable human being, easily aggravated and agitated. I mostly took it out on my coworkers, Gabby and Steven. Though to be fair, quite a few times, Steven actually deserved it. At times last year, I would find myself wondering, who would I be when the dust settled? Would I remain the miserable old person that I had seemingly become? Or would I return to my more good-humored self? My answer, I was amused to note, was basically a mixture of both. I was no longer the completely laid-back guy that I used to be, nor did I have the endless reserve of patience that I used to have. That was a function of two things. One, I was older. I had experienced more. But also, I was never really that person in the first place. That was really just the mask I had on. And as I was getting older, I no longer had the energy to maintain that mask. When I was irritated or angry, I would act like it. Most people would hear that statement and ask, so what? What's the big deal? To someone who is codependent or otherwise suffers from mental health issues, they would understand that this is actual progress for me. Selby guy. Wait, no, wait, I don't even think I can cook. And that wasn't the only improvement. I also started to try to learn how to cook from something other than a microwave. However, there was something that I hadn't made a whole lot of progress on since I got my car and my place to live last year. And that was leaving Duncan. Part of the problem was my depression. But there was another problem. And it was simply that I was afraid. Afraid to take steps to start living again. That was really why my dating life had stalled. There had certainly been girls on Plenty of Fish that I had talked to, but I would never see it through. And the same was with my job hunt. I was playing the game of life too tentatively. And honestly, I really didn't know how to stop. Me and Julia were headed to the Children's Museum in West Harper. The it's where I thought I was going last year when we were going to the Harper Science Center. It's a place that actually has some special meaning to me. No, just going. The whale, anyway. I went there as a child, probably around Julia's age. And again, roughly eight years ago, with my mom and sister. My sister was having one of her birthday parties there. Eight years ago, when I was a much younger man. It was at this very party that I introduced my mom and my sister to the future mother of my child. This was a few years before Julia was born, and a few years before my mom and sister would depart for Seattle. Shortly after the divorce, my ex would remark that every once in a while when she looks at Julia, she sees my sister. I totally see the same thing. Right down to certain expressions that Kristen used to give me. As a kid, I sat in that whale. Kristen had as well. And now so was Julia. Three generations all having sat on that whale. And of course, I couldn't quite resist.
Uh, look up, Jules. Oh. It's a big cat. Uh, it's a bobcat. Yeah, a bobcat. Yeah, look how big he is, huh? Hi, bobcat. Yeah. I don't think I've even seen one of these before. <laughs> Me either. I don't know why. The year was moving fast. Compared to last year, this one was breezing right by. Before I knew it, it was February and my birthday. My 38th to be exact. Most years, I would spend time on this day dwelling about how far I had not come and where I wasn't in life. This year though, it wasn't hard to look back at my circumstances last year and realize I was in a far better place than I was a year ago. Early that day I went to the movies to see Happy Death Day 2 and then later on to Olive Garden with Adam and Stacy. Happy birthday to you. Alright, I'll just let him. Happy birthday to you happy birthday dear david happy birthday to you you should totally release an album Yay! The winter months were falling away. It was starting to get warmer. I found myself thinking about my daughter Julia, as I often do, either planning out our weekends together when I had her, or wondering how she was doing when I didn't. On this particular occasion, I was thinking about how much she had grown and changed right before my own eyes from being a small little baby gradually getting bigger from the moment she was able to crawl and stand and then walking to who she is today Watching your kid grow up as a parent is a mixture of things. 
both filled with pride and complete and utter terror. Watching as they gradually do things that they weren't able to do before. I wouldn't miss any of it for the world. Watching her grow up is one of the reasons why I'm happy that I didn't have to go anywhere. That I didn't have to go to Seattle. That I managed to pull through. Julia was my light, my brightest light in fact, in the darkest of times. Marshmallow, I'm gonna eat it. But there was something else I found myself thinking about her. How she was utterly fearless. Unafraid to talk to anybody. Unafraid to do anything. Or to try new things. I was thinking, perhaps, I could learn a thing or two from her. That I could take a page from her playbook and start living my life boldly and unafraid. To stop living so tentatively, and to not be afraid to live again. After all, I had already been through the worst that life could offer. What else could life throw at me that was worse than what I had already experienced? It was time to ask women out on dates. To pursue other job opportunities. But more important than anything, to go after my dreams with everything I had. Had I learned enough? Had I discovered enough about myself to make my life work? I had no idea. But I wasn't going to learn anything by doing nothing. It was time to put myself out there once again. <laughs>